Hi, I'm Max Spainauer. And I'm Troy McCormick. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. I'm Troy McCormick and today we're in Park County, Indiana at the Old Goat Trading Post. And joining me today is Dave Blake. And I hate to ask Dave, but are you the old goat? Yes, I am. Well, I, the question begged to be asked, so yep. I had to do it. Yep. Now besides uh, operating and owning the Old Goat Trading Post, which is right here close to Turkey Run State Park, Shade State Park, and the Cover Bridge capital of uh, Indiana in the Midwest, Dave does the something. world. The world. The world. Well, let's get. We got to get all that. Yeah, in there, right? yeah. The world here. How many covered bridges are there? Uh, I think I believe there's 42. There's here, a lot. I know in, the Cover Bridge Park Festival County. is really worth coming to see if you haven't been here before. But today we're here to talk about kind of a unique product that Dave does, and those are, they're called spirit hides. Now, for those that, that hunt deer or, or elk, we know we know that you can tan hides and you can make hats out of them. You can make. Uh, clothing, jackets, gloves, you can do things with the hide, or you can just have the hide tan. But seeing it as an art form is something that's been very appealing for me now that I've seen the spirit hides. Tell me a little bit about what a spirit hide is. Well, basically it's a, a hair sculpture. Okay. That's uh, tan them hair on and give them a haircut. There you go. Yeah. You're, you're actually kind of just, it's almost like a block of limestone or you're starting with a deer hide and you're shaving away the extra and you're leaving an art mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. shave, every, shave away everything that doesn't look like a deer. And, and we're using deer hides, you're using elk yep. hides, and do you usually do a deer on a deer hide? Most, most of the time, yes. On deer, deer look the best. On elk, I can get a little more creative. There's more color. Mm -hmm. on, on elk, I can do eagles, mountain lions, different wildlife, I can get a little more creative on and the, We're going to see elk. here in a little bit about how you do this, but basically <clears throat> you're literally shaving away the hair off of a hair on tanned hide. Mm -hmm. Now I guess the question also needs to be asked, what in the world made you think of doing this? Because this isn't something I've seen anywhere before. Uh, just years of, of working with hides. I've been tanning hides for over, okay. over 30 years or right at 30 years. And uh, I moved up to Montana in the mid 90s and uh, terrible snowstorm, got snowed in the winter of 95, 96, and uh, the first hide that I, that I ever shaved was a, uh, an elk hide, okay. and it was a, a blonde bull, and it was so blonde it was almost white. It was just, it was a wow. beautiful, beautiful hide, and just years of working with hides, I knew uh, that they get their color from the tips of their guard hairs, mm -hmm. and they get, uh, the deeper you shave down, the more color, you can get into different colors, colors and different shades. And uh, I just kind of seen that eagle in that in that blonde bull elk hide, the white head, the white tail. So as you're looking at this elk hide, it's almost as though the the image was coming out. Yeah, it just popped in my head. It just I looked at it and I thought, Ooh, white head, white tail, yeah. Yeah. And and I, I had my clippers right there. I was snowed in. I was bored to death. I didn't even waste any time. I threw it on a table and started cutting hair. I worked on it for probably three months. What do you use to shave the hair away? Hair clippers. Just hair clippers? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I got, I got three ranges. I got a big pair of sheep shears when I'm done to shave out the, the mass just mm -hmm. to save time. I, I got a big pair of sheep shears and then I have a regular pair of barber shears that I do most of it with and then I got a little pair of dog groomers. And then I do scissor, a lot of scissor work too on the eyes and nostrils and you know, detail, some yeah. of the detail. Okay. Now, there, there's something just, you know, it, it's very attractive about the deer hide itself, it, and you leave this kind of natural edging mm -hmm. uh, from, the, from the tanning process, but if you've never really looked closely at a deer hide, it, it has a lot of different colors in it. Uh, you've got the white uh, uh, belly hairs and, and around the tail and, and the neck, and, and yet we've got different shades of brown, but tell me how you get some of the shading uh, out of this, because you don't just chop it all up. I mean, there are places where we take it all the way down to the hide, mm -hmm. but then you also get the shading and dimensional effect out of this. Tell me how mm -hmm. you do that. You just uh, 
take your clippers and just skim down. Just knock your guard hair tips down, and then you can go take it a step further. You can layer down till, uh, and actually on the deer, the deeper you go, the lighter the, the, lighter the hair gets. Now, if I shave and, out some of these gray hairs, they're oh, going to yeah. get blonder. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I could do, I could do an, an eagle right on. Yeah. Actually, it'd be a bald eagle, yeah. by oh. the way. But, oh. That was good. That was good. <laughs> okay. I set myself up. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't resist. Yeah, there you go. Now, let's let's actually take a look at. Uh, I know you've started a, a hide here, mm -hmm. yeah, and we've got the shape of the deer already kind of in place. But you're going to work some of this hair out for us. Mm -hmm. And if you have somewhere, if you could just sh kind of show us where you're taking it all the way down to the hide, and then go ahead and just demonstrate a little bit about some of the shading, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can go ahead and remove those as needed. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. take a look at that. Sure. Okay. I'm uh, doing this very special deer hide here. Uh, I'm doing a white tail buck. Uh, you know, usually right before you see their flag go off through the woods, they usually turn around and look at you. And that's what this buck is doing. Anyway, I'm just starting to detail it. I've got the, the tail in. Oh, a little, a little cut here and there to show his hindquarters. Now here on his back leg, you, you shave down to get into the lighter color to make that back leg look like it's back. Here's the front leg, the back leg's back behind. Uh, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, how this works, you got the natural color of the hide. You can knock your guard hair tips down and get a shade darker. Okay, and then you can go deeper yet and get a shade lighter. And then you can go way down and get lighter yet. And now that's kind of a light gray. This is the stubble. This is with it shaved all the way off, all the way down. That's that's all the way down to the to the nubs. Uh, most of the work I do uh, is natural. When I'm done with this deer, it'll have a border of hair all the way around it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Life Essentials in Brookston, Indiana, provides the products you need to become more independent. Products like our journeyman wheelchair provide all-terrain access for the hunter and all-around outdoorsman. Every year, thousands of people are born with or acquire disabilities. Whether your special needs are for residential, commercial, agricultural, or just enjoying the outdoors once again, we customize our lifts and mobility products to fit your needs. We're raising you to new heights. Call today and we'll work with you to take back your life. The Old Goat Trading Post in Bloomingdale, Indiana offers not only traditional fur hides, hats, and mountain man-like apparel, but beautifully crafted spirit hides. Artistically sculpted from elk, moose, deer, and buffalo hides, they are the perfect wall hanging for your home or vacation cabin. The shaved hair sculpture and original painted scenes combine to create a natural canvas and work of art. Visit www.oldgoattrading.com for more information. Sugar Camp Lodge offers some of Indiana's finest trophy deer and wild turkey hunting opportunities. We have 400 acres of woods, marshes, and farmland that provides amazing habitats to hunt. You'll enjoy great meals and accommodations and our beautifully remodeled 1850s lodge. Sugar Camp Lodge is available for meetings, get-togethers, and special occasions. Visit us online at www.sugarcamplodge.com for more information and to book your next hunting adventure. Looking for adventure? Marengo Cave has it all. Explore the underground wonders of Marengo Cave with our two easy walking tours or go on an adventurous cave exploring trip with hard hats and lots of mud. Kids will love discovering gemstones at the Cave Springs Mining Flume. This U.S. National Natural Landmark has been open to the public since 1883 and provides breathtaking views of underground cave formations. Visit us online at MaringoCave.com and plan your visit today. I have uh, some of the hides. I have two painters. Uh, one lives right down the road. In fact, uh, 
I'm going to be going to see her later today. She's working on a project uh, that's going up to Michigan. Uh, and I have another really good artist that's uh, in Montana uh, that paint, that do background sceneries. Uh, whenever I have one painted, uh, I put a primer on it, a real thin primer that soaks into the hair follicles good. And then I give them to my painting artists and they put whatever background scenery uh, that I want and they can put anything on a hide. Uh, we do one real nice, we'll get it some film of it later, it's a log cabin scene with a sunset. But uh, anyway, that's kind of the process and, and the, the deer, uh, you have, you can see the different colors, I demonstrated the different colors. Uh, elk hides have a little more variation in color. I can get a little better detail out of them. Most of the custom work that I've done over the years has been on elk. But uh, I also do moose and buffalo and they're uh, a little harder to work with. But uh, they, they work out pretty good also. But uh, anyway. Now you've done some bison hides, haven't you? Yes. Yes, some very large bison hides. It takes a big wall to display those. Yeah, I don't do many of them anymore. Uh, I did two uh, 64 square foot uh, buffalo hides. Uh, they were both uh, a pair of uh, nine-year-old range bulls come out of North Dakota, and they were, they were huge, like I say, 60, 64, 65 square foot. And uh, what I do on them is a bull buffalo on the run with the Indian on horseback, sticking them with a the spear. Uh, I don't have any in stock right now, but I had two that were fully painted. Uh, a guy up in uh, Detroit, Michigan bought the last one. The first one I did a, uh, an auction through the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Hmm. But, uh, Dave, if somebody wanted to see more of your work, where could they uh, go online? Uh, I have a website, oldgoattrading.com. And, and, uh, and you have some on display here at the trading post? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have some for sale? Oh, certainly. Good, good. Yeah. Yep, that's what I do. Now, the, the, the one you're working on today, you did mention, is a special one. Yes, yes. We're going to end up seeing uh, something that uh, we'll probably see it again on Indiana Outdoor Ventures. I'm hoping. We're hoping to put uh, the IOA logo on here and see what it looks like on deer hide. Yep. I'd like to, I'd like to go right here with the logo, and uh, we're going to make sure this one looks real good. Good, good. Well, let me see you take just a little bit more uh, off somewhere. Okay. We do you have a barber's license that lets you do this? No, this, uh, I, have a, I have a beauty salon uh, <laughs> license. Uh, I, do, I do just elk and moose and whitetail but, uh, and occasional buffalo. But, uh, well, I can do, uh, let's see, we could... Uh, We cut that front shoulder in. And we kind of want to give him a, a white belly. White tails have a, they have a white belly on them. We want to lighten that. Use these clippers a little quicker. Okay, and then we'll put a little, we'll put a little, oh, kind of a front shoulder type deal on him, but it'll some wrinkles in his neck because his, his head is. Turn backwards. Cut that front shoulder in. Put a couple of wrinkles down. Here. 
Okay, now we'll cut this other shoulder in. I'm just gonna cut a line. And we'll just go right across here. Take that down to make that leg looks like it's behind the other one. Take that hair down a little bit. Okay. And we'll put, they got a white on their chest too. We'll lighten this up a little. Try to make it look like it comes behind that front shoulder. Should we put a smile on him? Should we make him look happy or? I think he's a happy deer. He doesn't we, need to Yeah. I can make him look happy or I can make him look a little mad. Yeah, we'll put a, we'll make a happy deer. Put a little grin on his face. Second, I'm gonna have to reach around here and grab my fine adjustment tool here. Got his nostril. Okay. Now I think we'll put a little put a little brow on him. Okay, now this is the funny part. Put his eye in. Assuming you've done a couple deer over the years, because you're not looking at a pattern or a stencil. Or well, I've I've done. I do a limited series on these deer. Uh, this is all I did for a living for several years, and I, and these are all numbered pieces. And I I had my numbers pretty high because I was back in that. So when this was all I did, I was selling you know over a hundred a year. I uh, did a lot of traveling, did a lot of shows. Uh, I'm on, I, I'm doing 200 of these deer, and I'm on 190. I think this one here is going to be at 193 or 194. So this is going to close out within the next several months. This deer will be done. This and particular it, pattern and shape of the deer. This, this deer right here is copyrighted. Okay, when, the, when, the, when I hit my 200 of 200, which is going to be coming up here very shortly, then I'm going to come out with a whole new deer. This will be discontinued. And my new deer, I've got three. I've got one jumping a fence. I've got one sharpening his, his tools on a tree. Uh, and what was the other one? I've got three, and I think I'm going to do one of each and pick out the best one and probably keep the numbers at around maybe 40. Because okay. I get tired of doing the same deer. I've done, you know, I've done 190 of these. I say, you weren't really going very slow. You well, were yeah. And yeah, I mean, I get, I get faster at it, uh, but it gets boring. Sure. It does. And, and I love doing custom work. Uh, 
And, and if somebody is interested in a custom logo, you can do that. Oh, sure, sure. Or I can shave if they've got a, a picture of their deer or a picture of a deer they want on a hide. I can put whatever they want on a hide. So if somebody brought you a photo of a big 10 or 12 pointer they shot, you'd be able to do that. Their deer yes. on a hide. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'll tell you what. I just couldn't be happier uh, with this spirit hide. David just did a, a spectacular job. We've got this fantastic eight point buck and standing behind it is the, the Bridgeton covered bridge and a grist mill right here in Park County in Indiana. Uh, he just captured the whole essence of nature and wildlife, hunting, uh, uh, tourism in Indiana, the fall foliage. And of course he put the uh, Indiana Outdoor Adventures logo right where he said he did up there in the corner in the sky. Uh, it really looks nice up there. When you, when you look at the, uh, the piece that he has created, you can understand why he calls it a spirit hide. He's taken something, uh, the hide of the deer, and sculpted the, the essence and spirit of that animal back into uh, an art form that we can look at and appreciate for many, many years. The uh, uh, bullet holes are even visible uh, in the... Uh, the hide, so we've, we've got the remembrance of the hunt, we've got the uh, exciting memories of, of the animal itself, and the beauty of the, the covered bridge, or maybe you wanted to go with uh, one of his uh, log cabin scenes, or you want to try a custom logo. Regardless, Dave, you did an outstanding job. This is something that we'll be able to share with people here in the office, uh, point to and say, you know, what is that? And we can tell them all about what a spirit hide is. Thanks a lot to the, uh, the uh, Old Goat Trading Post and to David for uh, all of his hard work on this one. After serving our country, serious injury shouldn't prevent our veterans from enjoying life. Paralyzed Veterans of America works with veterans to ensure that their health care and benefit needs are met, provides assistance with career needs, and offers challenging and rewarding activities. The Kentucky and Indiana chapter of PVA is proud to provide adaptive sports for members that includes hunting, fishing, trap and skeet shooting, bowling, and billiards. Visit us online to learn more about Paralyzed Veterans of America. Lawrence County is an unexpected destination found in the heart of southern Indiana rolling hills, offering recreational landscapes, a rich limestone heritage, and unique outdoor experiences. This area is limestone country, well known for limestone quarries and stone carving heritage. It's also the home of Spring Mill State Park, geocaches, the scenic East Fork of the White River, and underground caverns. Plan your adventure at limestonecountry.com or call 800-798-0769. Cave Country Canoes, located in the heart of Indiana's cave country, offers a variety of canoe rental trips from half-day outings for beginners to two-day adventures for the more experienced enthusiast. Our canoe trips follow the gently meandering Blue River through the wooded hills of southern Indiana. Abundant wildlife and great fishing opportunities abound. Go to cavecountrycanoes.com for more information about our canoe and kayak trips. Your next adventure is just a paddle away. Follow Indiana Outdoor Adventures online with Facebook, Twitter, and our website. Stay up to date with our exciting adventures as we're out in the field filming and meeting new people. From news updates and announcements, to Twitter posts by co-host Troy McCormick. Why wait until the next season of shows when you can follow us as we're filming them? Join us online to get the most current news on Indiana Outdoor Adventures. I know that you work a lot with tanning hides. Just tell me a little bit about the tanning process and, and what you have to go through from the time you flush it until you end up with a tan hide. Okay. Well, they're flushed, then they're, they have to be washed. You gotta get them, get them clean. Uh, then they go in a pickle solution, which is uh, salt water and sulfuric acid. Is kind that? of a preservative type mixture. Mm -hmm. okay. that, that kind of pickles, pickles your hide. Uh, it soaks in that for about two days. Of course, you have to stir them usually three times a day. Uh, there is a little acid in that pickle, and it's heavier than water. Uh, sure. If you don't stir them, the acid will sell, settle out, and it will burn your hides on the bottom. Okay. So it's got to be... Uh, stirred. It's a little labor intensive and you've got to spend some time. Sure, okay. sure. And uh, then when they come out, then they have to be washed again to get the salt water out of them. And uh, I wash in a sodium bicarb solution, which kills 100% of the acid. There's no acid in them at all. Okay. Uh, then they're stretched. Now, you can see back here, these coyotes mm -hmm. are stretched and oiled, but the, the elk 
and the deer hides are all nailed out. You see all these nails and all these holes on all these walls. Uh, when I'm rolling in the winter time, there'll be hides all over these walls. Okay. So they're, they're stretched and then they're oiled with uh, needs foot oil. And that's when they're drying? They're, when they're drying, okay. yeah, you put the oil, I put about four coats of oil on them hmm. as they dry. You want to, you don't want them to dry too fast. As the moisture dries out of the hide, you want right. the oils replacing it okay. as it happens. So you, that helps keep them from getting brittle and cracking? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. If you, if you don't do that, they'll be so dry and hard that you wow. won't be able to, uh, okay. they're, they're no now, pliability. And you may have seen hides stretched out on a frame with a, a kind of a lattice work almost of a hide or string. Where they stretch them. Where they stretch mm -hmm. them. You're nailing them to the wall to do the same thing. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot quicker. Yes. So uh, they come off the wall, they're dry, then what happens to them? Okay, then once they're dry with the, with the oil in them, then you've got a hide full of oil. Then they go in on a beam okay. and they're worked with a big Sheffield draw knife uh, over a beam and the fibers are broke down. So then, take, That takes them from a stiff hide to more of a supple hide that's right. soft. Okay. Right, you just work them, you work them with a, with a big draw knife over a beam. Well, then you, ha then you end up with a hide full of oil. Okay. So you have to get the oil out of the hide, and then you, you about have to have a tumbler. Uh -huh. And I tumble, uh, a lot of people use corn cob, crushed corn cob. I just use sawdust. Hmm. It works for me. And that draws that? Yep, they just yeah. tumble, and, and the, the sawdust pulls the oils out, and it takes the oils out. Okay. And, it, and it helps loosen them up a little bit, too. And you've got a large tumbler yes. dryer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when they come out, I mean, are they ready then to... Well, then they come out of there, they're not full of oil anymore, but they're full of sawdust. Ah, sure. So then they go into a cage tumbler, which is right next door to my regular tumbler. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just spin them in that for about 30 minutes. And that just, uh, it's a, like a cage. The sawdust, it just cleans the sawdust out of the fur and out of the hide. Mm -hmm. They come out of there and it's, it's a done deal. And you've got a tanned hide. Mm -hmm. How long will Ready a tanned hide last? Depends on humidity. Okay. Uh, Humidity is really hard on leather, especially your thinner hides. Uh, these these spirit hides, you put them on a wall. Uh, if you have a controlled environment in your home, air conditioned in the summer and heated in the winter, they'll last forever. Okay. Uh, but great humidity is hard on them. Yeah, it's, it can. It's, it, it's it's hard on. Well, leather. it's a fantastic process. Uh, high tanning has been around for a long time, obviously. I love this new artistic approach that you've taken to it. And it's fun. If you're ever in Park County, uh, be sure and stop in at the Old Goat Trading Post and see what they've got to offer. I think you'll be glad that you did because it's really fascinating to uh, look at the finished product. Dave, thanks a lot. You bet. Thank you, Troy. Join Appreciate us again it. next time right here on Indiana Outdoor Adventures.